Good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is Galina Domdukova. I am a senior researcher at the East Siberia State University of Technology and Management, and I would like to uh, speak today about mapping the homeland place names in the poetry of Bayer Dugarov. Uh, the article analyzes the motive of homeland in the creative activity of a Buryat poet Bayer Dugarov from methodologically new approach of distant reading. Franco Moretti introduces distant reading as a new method of literary analysis, where instead of traditional way of careful interpretation of text, Moretti proposes to move from text to models, graphs from quantitative history, maps from geography, and trees from evolutionary theory. But first of all, a few words about the Buryat people. The Buryat people are an ethnic group living in Siberia on the lake uh, Baikal on the territory of ethnic Buryatia. With a population of about 500,000 people, they live mostly in the Republic of Buryatia, Aga Okrug, Ustarda Okrug of Russia, and also in Mongolia and China. They represent the major northern subgroup of the Mongolian people. Bayer Dugarov is one of the most significant contemporary Buryat poets. Nomadic worldview and geographic mobility is inherent to the lyrical hero and the poet himself. That is why it is no surprise that a lot of place names appear in the poems of Dugarov. We argue that mental map of Dugarov's homeland does not coincide with the geographical one. The statistics of place names showed that the geographical border of the Republic of Buryatia does not correspond to the territory of homeland in Dugarov's mental map. Uh, the Buryat language has developed a rich vocabulary to express the notion of homeland, but the term Nutak is probably the most common. Nutak initially meant the territory of inhabitants and later started to be interpreted as the place of birth. For Dugarov, such Tonto Nutak is situated in the Orlik village of the Akinsky district uh, in the west of the Republic of Buryatia. A poem in Orlik depicts the landscape of the village. In the shadow of mighty fans of ridges and golden foliage, a herd of wooden houses goes down to the Blue River. In the traditional Buryat world worldview, the native land is usually attributed with the most positive characteristics, such as beauty of nature, fertile pastures, numerous healing springs, plenty of wild animals. Homeland is filled with such elements which, from the point of view of bearers of traditional culture, are obligatory for comfort accommodation. They are a mountain, a tree, and a water source, a river, a spring, or a lake. Not only uh, the native village, but the whole mountainous region of Akinsky district is perceived as homeland for Dugarov. He fondly refers it as Aha, elder brother its original Buryat name. Sacred spot of the universe, dressed in coniferous furs, O blessed mountain country, O my homeland, Aha. Orlik and Aha toponyms are mentioned only once in the analyzed collection, while the Sayan mountains, including particular peaks, are referred eight times in concave and thirteen times in the Asian allure uh, collections of poems. Such statistics makes it clear that not just his Tontonutak Orlik, but all Cyan Mountains are perceived as homeland. Cyan Mountains are a mountain, mountain range in the southern Siberia. Two mountain ranges, Cyan and Altai, are often united into Cyan Altai region. The Cyan Altai has a total area of 1,065,000 square kilometers and belong to the territory of Russia, mostly in the Republic of Buryatia and Tuva. <coughs> the poet mentions three times the toponym Sayan Altai and four times Altai in Asian Allure collection. The idea of a united perception of the mountains, no matter the political borders, is depicted in the poem On the Path, where even Tuva, as part of the Cyan Mountains, is incorporated into Dugarov's more broad notion of homeland. Apart from Cyan Mountains, 
The Lake Baikal turns out to be another most mentioned toponym in his poems. The Lake Baikal is the deepest lake in the world, which contains almost one-fourth of the world's fresh water. A lot of genealogical myths of Buryats are connected to the Baikal. Baikal is a beautiful place full of sacral meaning where people come to draw strands or ask for protection. Baikal becomes a recognizable spot on the journey map of the lyrical hero. And the route from Baikal and again to Baikal continues. The morning hum of the 21st century I meet on the trip. The poet speaks about Baikal when he is abroad and misses his homeland. The roofs of Paris float before me to all parts of the world. It is a pity from your sky-high mansard Baikal is not visible. What's more, Baikal turns into a unique metaphor to describe the beauty of the beloved woman. The eyes of my darling, two gentle Baikals, two marvelous lights in the dark of the universe. Along with the existing real places, Dugarov texts on his homeland map historical toponyms mentioned in Buryat legends and chronicles that no more exist on the territory of ethnic Buryatia. In such a way, Bargujin Tokum, the land observed in the secret history of the Mongols of the 13th century, is met three times in the poems uh, in the collections of poems Concave and Asian Allure of Dugarov. Location described by Dugarov lasts from Irkutsk Oblast to the Baikalsky Krai through the Republic of Buryatia. And this is indeed the map of Bargujin Tukum land, according to the Buryat historians, who insist that the location of this ethnic historic region in the north of larger Mongolian unity during the Middle Ages was not limited to the valley of Bargujin River, but lasted from western side of the Lake Baikal to the lower reaches of the Selenga in Transbaikalia. However, Dugarov's homeland cannot be defined within the boundaries of historical Bargujin Tukum only, because a huge layer of homeland poems is devoted to Mongolia as an ancestral home. In such a way, there are ten toponyms belonging to the territory of Mongolia in the concave uh, collection of poems and another thirteen in Asian allure. Mongolia for Dugarov is the first encampment. The lyrical hero walks along the Mongolian steep, which landscapes differ from his Tonto Nutak with high mountains and dense forests. But even though it is different, he could feel something native in this land, the memory of the first encampment. The idea of Mongolia as an ancestral home is expressed in many poems of Dugarov. Into the mute depths of Mongolian steps had gone the ends of my family tree. He tenderly calls Mongolia his grandmother. My grandmother Mongolia, I very much ask you tell me about your expanse and your mirage. On your knees in childhood I did not manage to sit. In mature age I bowed to you, to your ancient sources, to your new destiny. Thus, the mental map of homeland in Dugarov's poems goes far beyond the territory of the Republic of Buryatia or even ethnic Buryatia, and includes even Mongolia as an ancestral home. The geographical map of contemporary Buryatia, largely constructed and reduced in course of time, does not display the traditional locations included into the mental map of the Buryats. Dugarov, in his poems, shapes this initial, one large homeland, the common Buryat ethnic space that goes beyond the territorial boundaries of districts within the Republic of Buryatia, regions within Russia and even beyond the international boundaries of Russia and Mongolia. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.